Why does Saturn have rings? What are the different types of clouds? How does an octopus swim? Why does a tiger have stripes? How do flowers grow? Tell me why. The video encyclopedia is a reference work that's designed to show the answers to questions that young people ask. All materials used in this work are based upon the best-selling book series by Arkady Lyoko. What are animals? An animal is a living creature. It is different from plants because, among other things, it has the ability to move from place to place. Protozoa are the simplest animals known to exist. They consist of only one cell. All protozoa live in water or in moist places. That little one-celled animal can hunt, eat food, digest it, and make it into living matter. It can burn the food it eats and throw off waste. It can also reproduce itself. Some protozoa live as parasites in man and other animals and can cause diseases like malaria. One of the tiniest parasites that can attack animals is a virus. A virus is a very small particle, so small that it will pass through the smallest filters. They grow and multiply in the presence of living tissue. Viruses cause many diseases like chickenpox, smallpox, measles, yellow fever, flu, and the common cold in humans. The rabies virus can infect all warm-blooded animals, such as wolves, foxes, skunks, bears, bats, and dogs. Man receives it most often when bitten by an animal infected with the virus. This is why when a human being is bitten, an effort is always made to find the animal and examine it to see if it might have rabies. It just doesn't pay to take chances. There is a cure for rabies, and it works well if the disease is caught in time. What is a vertebrate? There are many kinds of animals. Vertebrates are birds, snakes, fish, frogs, cows, and man, who all have a backbone. The backbone is made up of small pieces of bone called vertebrae. Vertebrates have a well-developed digestive and muscular system. They have a bony box-like structure at one end of their backbones to contain the brain. Their nerves run together into large bundles which are carried in a cavity in the backbone. Vertebrates never have more than four limbs. Are our teeth the same as animals' teeth? Beasts of prey have tearing teeth. Rodents have gnawing teeth. Cattle have grinding teeth. Every animal has teeth suited to its own way of life. The beaver has cutting teeth. The canine teeth of dogs and cats are sharp and long so that it is easy for them to seize and hold their prey. A squirrel has teeth that can gnaw through the shell of a nut. Sharks have cutting teeth for eating fish and blunt teeth for crushing shellfish. Man has a collective dentition, which means that he has different kinds of teeth one alongside another. This is evidence that man is adapted to a mixed plant and animal diet. Can animals taste, talk, and laugh? Tasting is the ability to understand the impact of molecules. These moving molecules stimulate the taste nerves, and we identify the message we receive as having a certain taste. Everything that makes the molecules move about more intensifies the taste. That's why hot things have more taste than cold things. The sensation of taste is first received by taste buds, which are really nerves. They are located on the tongue. The number of taste buds varies greatly. Man is only a moderate taster. We have about 3,000 taste buds. A whale, which swallows whole schools of fish, has few or no taste buds. A pig is more particular in its taste than man and has 5,500 taste buds. A cow has 35,000 taste buds, and an antelope has as many as 50,000 taste buds. Animals that live in the sea often have taste buds all over their body. Fish taste with the whole surface of their body right down to their tails. Butterflies and flies taste with their feet. Snakes and lizards use their tongues for tasting. The tip of the tongue flickers out and picks up particles. It brings them to a special organ in the roof of the mouth which smells or tastes them. Among humans, all communication is not by means of words. 
We have expressions to indicate anger, indifference, joy, and fear. We use gestures with hands and arms. Many animals make signs and noises to do the same thing. When a mother hen makes a loud noise or crouches down, all her chicks understand this is a warning of danger. When a horse neighs or paws the ground, other horses get the message. If a bird flies up in a certain way, other birds can tell why it is flying off and may follow. Dogs bark, howl, growl, snarl, and whine. Other dogs can understand what these sounds mean. Animals also communicate by smell. Most animals that live in herds depend on smell to keep together. Animal language is generally acquired by instinct. Most animals will make the right kind of cries and sounds and expressions, even if they have never seen another animal like themselves before. Birds learn their way of singing, though. That's why a sparrow brought up among canaries will try to sing like one. It has been learning the wrong language. Human speech is a complicated process. No animals are able to perform it. They may be able to duplicate some of the sounds that humans make, but they are not able to understand what these sounds mean. We use a whole series of organs to produce the sounds we want to make when we utter words. The way our vocal cords vibrate, the way the throat, mouth, and nasal cavities have to be adjusted, the way the lips, teeth, lower jaw, tongue, and palate have to be moved are things that animals cannot do. Words are only labels for objects, actions, feelings, experiences, and ideas. The use of words means the use of labels or symbols which are organized to communicate something. This requires a degree of intelligence that some animals do not have, so they can't talk the way people do. Crying and laughing are human ways of expressing emotions. Animals can whimper and whine when they are hurt, but crying involves the production of tears with this emotion. Animals have tear fluid in their eyes, but it is used to irrigate the cornea. Laughter is also a human phenomenon. Man laughs because a certain mental process or emotion is involved. Animals are incapable of having such a mental process or emotion. Psychologists also believe that laughter is a social phenomenon. We laugh when we are part of a group that finds something amusing. Animals, of course, cannot resort to laughter for any of these reasons. Can animals use reason? When we think an animal is learning something, all that is really happening is that an instinct it was born with is developing or ripening. The common way in which animals learn, in the true sense of learning, is by making mistakes and remembering to avoid them in the future. This is how dogs learn to behave or do tricks. Using reason is finding a solution to a problem or difficulty which has never been met before and which is not solvable from instinct. Recent experiments have shown that some members of the A family are able to use reason to a certain extent. Until much more is known about the animal kingdom, we can only guess about their abilities. Why do animal eyes glow? All of us have seen the eyes of some animal glowing at us in the dark. It is natural to think that the eyes themselves are glowing. The truth is that the glow is only the reflection of light from some other source. Reflection takes place because there is a layer of crystalline substance in the eyes of many animals. Man has none of this substance in his eyes. This reflecting layer also helps the animals see in the dark, which is why they can see better at night than man can. The differences in color of the light reflected from the eyes of animals is due to the different number of blood vessels in their eyes. An animal that has many blood vessels in its eyes will reflect a reddish glow. If it has fewer blood vessels, it will have a whiter glow. Can animals count or see colors? Scientists believe that certain birds and animals can actually count. In one experiment, a bird was offered one grain at a time. All of the grains were good to eat, but the seventh grain was always stuck to the dish. After a while, the pigeon learned to count to six grains, and when the seventh grain was offered, it refused to peck at it. In another experiment, a chimpanzee was taught to pick up straws. It always handed over the exact number of straws that was asked for, but it could never count above the number five. According to the results of experiments, certain animals cannot see colors. Dogs and cats are colorblind. Horses are able to tell yellow and green from any shade of gray and from one another. They don't seem to be very good at recognizing red or blue as colors. What is the difference between warm and cold-blooded animals? Animals fall into two general classes. 
warm-blooded and cold-blooded. Warm-blooded animals give birth to live young and care for them during the earliest stages of their lives. Cold-blooded animals lay eggs and in many cases never see their own young. Do temperature changes affect animals? We feel changes in the temperature around us, but we don't expect the temperature of our body to change. We are classified as homeothermic. All warm-blooded animals, all mammals, and birds are in this group. There are animals whose body temperature does change with the temperature around them. They are called poikilothermic, and they include insects, snakes, lizards, tortoises, frogs, and fishes. Their temperature may be slightly lower than the temperature of the environment. We also call them cold-blooded animals. The normal body temperature of man is considered to be 98.6 degrees Fahrenheit. The temperature of other animals has quite a range. From 96 to 101 degrees is man, monkey, mule, ass, horse, rat, mouse, and elephant. From 100 to 103 degrees is cattle, sheep, dogs, cats, rabbits, and pigs. From 104 to 106 degrees are turkeys, geese, ducks, owls, pelicans, and vultures. From 107 to 109 degrees are fowl, pigeons, and small common birds. Animals may have to eliminate body heat in order to maintain a constant body temperature. Animals who don't sweat may have to do this by panting. This is why your dog often pants on a hot day. What is an animal's body fluid made of? The fluid in our body is basically a salt solution. It is made up of all different types of blood cells, various chemicals, and proteins. The plasma portion of blood is 90% water. It also contains salts, glucose, amino acids, vitamins, hormones, and the waste products of the body. It is generally believed that land animals are descendants from creatures that used to live in the sea. Their body fluid is still much like it used to be before they moved to dry land. This means that their body fluid is still like seawater. Since neither plants nor the land can give them enough salt, they keep craving more and they love to eat salt. Carnivores, or animals who eat meat, do not crave salt. This is because they obtain it from the body fluid of their victims. Herbivores, or animals who live on vegetable matter, need more salt. Why do some animals hibernate? Hibernating animals don't store up a food supply for the winter. They depend on plant food, and they store up a fat supply on their own bodies. When it can no longer find food, it crawls deep into its burrow and goes to sleep. It sleeps through the cold winter and lives on the fat which it has stored up. The word hibernate comes from the Latin and means winter sleep. The sleep of a true hibernator is different from ordinary sleep. While an animal is hibernating, all of its life functions nearly stop. The temperature of its body decreases until it is only a little warmer than the air of the den. Animals then burn the food stored in their bodies very, very slowly. Since they burn less fuel, they need less oxygen, and their breathing and heart rates are very slow. If the temperature in the den becomes very low, the hibernating animal wakes up, digs itself in a little deeper, and then goes to sleep once more. When spring comes, the animals are awakened by the change in temperature, moisture, and by hunger. Then they crawl out of their dens. Why do animals migrate? Thousands of species of animals migrate every year. Insects, such as some butterflies, travel thousands of miles every year. Fish, such as salmon, return to the rivers of their birth every year to spawn a new generation. Herrings race to western Norway to spawn where other fish, called capelins, wait to eat them. The capelin have learned that a good meal will be found in the warm Gulf Stream when the herrings arrive. Before man built so many cities and fences across the world, gigantic herds of animals used to migrate every year. 
In America, the buffalo would leave the northern plains in early autumn to head south. Since the buffalo have a thick covering of fur, they could easily tolerate the cold temperatures, but they are vegetarians and they rely on the wild grasses and bushes for food. To survive, they would move steadily south where sweet grass and abundant water could be found during the cold winter months. Each spring, the herds would once again travel north because the harsh summer temperatures would dry up the southern pastures. The migration that we notice the most is of the birds. In the northern climates, we notice that many birds seem to disappear in the winter months. They have all gone south. They travel for the same reasons as other species do, to survive the cold weather and to find food. In North America, geese travel from the polar areas of northern Canada through the United States and finish their journey in the southern states or in Mexico. The Arctic tern travels from Alaska to Patagonia in South America each autumn. Each spring, this fantastic journey is taken once again by older birds and by new fledglings that were born during the long cold winter. Year after year, millions of birds take these same journeys. Scientists have observed that all animals move back to their northern homes on a regular schedule. What is puzzling is that these migrating animals always know what the weather is like at their destination before they leave. Studies have proven that an exceptionally cold winter in the north will somehow be felt by the migrants. They will not start for home until conditions at the destination are perfect. Each species requires different things. Ducks and geese need rivers and ponds that are free from ice. Birds, such as warblers, must wait until the flowers are in bloom and insects are numerous. Migrating animals always return to the same places each year. No one knows how they remember things like landmarks. It is believed that they are guided by a sense of direction that allows them to find their way, even when landscapes have been changed by civilization, floods, or great fires. Tell me about early animals. Scientists believe that animal life began 500 million years ago, after the Earth's surface cooled and the oceans formed. They believe there was life in the ocean, but that there was no land life. Finally, as the fish-like creatures began to move out of the oceans onto the land, they found it difficult to move about because they had no legs. In the beginning, they used their fins as feet. Through evolution, after many, many years, those fins became legs and feet. Reptiles ruled the Earth for more than 100 million years. Some of the reptiles developed feathers on their bodies and their forelimbs became wings. In time, they learned to fly and birds came into being. Birds' feathers are the result of changes that took place in the reptile scales. Other reptiles ceased to lay eggs and became mammal-like animals that gave birth to their young inside their bodies. They also became warm-blooded and developed into true mammals. What happened to animals in the Ice Age? The Great Ice Age, or Glacial Period, was a time when a great mass of ice gradually formed over most of the world. While most of this glacial period is over, parts of it still remain in Antarctica and Greenland. Four million square miles of North America were buried under a great creeping ice sheet that reached as far south as Long Island. When the Ice Age came, animals from the Arctic migrated south but in front of the glaciers. Animals which could not stand the new colder conditions were forced to migrate to warmer regions or die out. Native wild animals now found in North America are merely a remnant of the many varieties of beasts known to have lived there before the Ice Age. Man was able to adapt his life to the colder climate because his intelligence allowed him to use his mind and ingenuity to survive. When did man begin to domesticate animals? Man started to domesticate animals so long ago that there are no records of when it might have happened. This use of animals like the yak, cattle, camels, and donkeys freed man to explore and begin to settle the entire world. Until that time, man could travel only as far as he could walk. His food had to come from the area in which he lived. Once man could rely on the animal for transportation, he could move freely to find new sources of food, clothing, fuel, and companionship. The dog helped man with his hunting. Cattle, sheep, goats, and pigs furnished meat and milk. 
pigeons have been used as messengers. Cats were domesticated in Egypt about 3,600 years ago. Elephants were tamed and put to work, and in South America, the llama has carried burdens for centuries. As man began to tame animals, he began to name them. Hippopotamus is Greek for river horse. Rhinoceros is Latin, and it comes from the Greek word rhinos, which means nose, and charis, which means horn. Wolf comes from the Anglo-Saxon wolf, which comes from the Latin vulpes, which means fox. Our word fox comes from the Icelandic fax, which means a hair mane. Porcupine comes from two Latin words, porcus, a swine, and spina, a thorn, so it's a pig with thorns. Among mammals, the elephant is believed to live the longest. According to verified records, there was an elephant who lived to be over 60. Horses can live over 50 years. Cats can live about 23 years. Bears can live 34 years. A parrot can live for 54 years. Not all animals of these species can live this long, but at least a few manage to live a long time. One animal who can live for a very long time is a tortoise. One famous one called the Amateurist tortoise definitely lived for 152 years. The animal that most closely resembles man is the ape. The ape has a skeleton structure like man's and has a thumb that can be made to meet the fingertips. This enables the ape to use his hands to grasp things and to climb trees. There are four kinds of man-like apes. These are the gorilla, the orangutan, the chimpanzee, and the gibbon. What are worms? Scientists find it difficult to define just what worms are. They may best be described as long, boneless animals, having an underside fitted for crawling and a more or less definite head end. One important feature of worms is that they can be divided into two similar portions, their right and left sides. When you have something that fits this description, you have a worm. Worms vary in size from microscopic to about 40 feet long. They form several primary groups of animals. The three major groups are the flatworms, roundworms and hookworms, and the segmented worms. The flatworms have flattened bodies. Each one contains both sexes within itself. Some of them are free living, others are parasites. The threadworms are a large group of worms varying in size from hardly visible species to others several feet long. The most dangerous worms are the pinworm, Trichina, the guinea worm, and the common roundworm. They cause serious illnesses. The earthworms are among man's best friends. By burrowing into the soil, they loosen it for the effective growing of crops. The body of the earthworm is divided into little rings or segments separated by grooves. It is called an annelid, which means little rings. An earthworm stays underground most of the time, tunneling through soft, damp topsoil and then feeding as it goes. It produces a slime that makes travel easy. An earthworm burrows along using two sets of muscles. One set runs around the body with one muscle in each segment. When the segment muscles tighten, the body becomes longer and thinner. The front end is pushed forward. The second set of muscles runs lengthwise along the body. When these muscles tighten, the segments are pulled up close together and the body shortens. An earthworm is like a tube within a tube. The long segmented body is one tube. Within this is the long digestive tube through which the food passes. The digestive tube is open at both ends, and food passes in at one end, and the undigested remains pass out at the other. Worms tunnel by swallowing the soil. This method is how they eat, for there are decaying bits of plants and animals in the soil. These are digested as the soil passes through the digestive tube. Tell me about some unusual animals. Through the centuries, animals have adapted to their climate and diet. To do so, they have changed by growing or shedding claws, losing heavy fur coats in the spring, and growing them in the fall, learning to hibernate or to migrate with the seasons. 
There are, however, two animals that defy every bit of scientific learning. One is a strange little animal that lives in Australia, in the eastern rivers of that country. It is called the duckbill platypus. The word platypus means flat-footed. This animal has a bill like a duck, though it is hard and leathery. It has flippers like a seal on its front feet and claws on its back feet. It is a mammal, but it lays eggs. It is equally at home on land or in the sea. The platypus is a fine swimmer. It also uses its powerful claws to dig burrows in riverbanks, and those tunnels can be over 30 feet long. The average body temperature of a platypus is 86 degrees Fahrenheit, but that can change rapidly and often. Although it is only the size of a rabbit, the platypus has a thick, furry skin, almost like an otter's. This is a puzzling and remarkable animal. Another strange animal is the echidna, or spiny anteater. The echidna has long claws, a tube-like snout, and a covering of short, stiff spines like that of a hedgehog or porcupine. But what makes it strange is that although it is a mammal, it lays eggs. This animal and the platypus are the only mammals that lay eggs like birds and most reptiles. The female develops a pouch on her underside at breeding time. No one is certain how the eggs get into the pouch. She carries the eggs until they hatch. The young live in the pouch until they become too big for comfort. Another odd little animal is the armadillo. An armadillo is covered with an armor-like coating. Descended from a prehistoric animal, the armadillo had an ancestor that was so large that prehistoric man used its shell for a tent. Today, the largest species lives in Brazil and is about the size of a pig. What has man learned by studying animals? By studying animals, man has learned a great deal about the history of the world. Many branches of science have begun as people study fish, birds, reptiles, and mammals. Many species have become endangered as man plants fields for crops and builds cities and factories to house a growing population. Scientists have created special areas all over the world where animals are protected and allowed to live in peace. By studying eating, reproductive, and migratory habits, scientists have been able to tell us much about these wonderful creatures who share our world. A wide range of subjects are available in this series now. Let's look at some of the questions that are covered in the Tell Me Why program. Weather. A tornado is a special kind of cyclone. It arises when conditions that cause ordinary thunderstorms are unusually violent. There is an updraft of air. There are winds blowing at... Flowers. A flower has a fragrance when certain essential oils are found in the petals. These oils are produced by the plant as part of its growing process. Space. Distances to the stars are so great that a unit for measuring distances was worked out. It's called a light year, and it is the distance that light travels in one year. Water. Water is a simple compound of two gases. Hydrogen, a very light gas, and oxygen, a heavier active gas. When hydrogen is burned in oxygen, water is formed. Gems. When minerals are better, rarer, clearer, or more crystalline than others, they are called gems. Gems are the most prized and famous of all minerals. Diamonds, emeralds, rubies, and sapphires stand out as the true gems. Ask for the additional volumes by subject from your dealer. They're available now.